So the latest hardware changes are pretty minimal. Um, mainly what I did was I incorporated the keyboard circuit, which was on a mini breadboard before and built it um, onto the board here. So there's the microcontroller um, and it uh, communicates with the keyboard, the PS2 keyboard um, through a, a header here through this little pigtail. Um, the other change I made is more pragmatic, um, which is that I um, cut and drilled a couple of pieces of plastic to mount on the top and the bottom of the board just to protect it a little from dust and from bumps and because uh, I think it looks quite cool. Um, so um, if you're ever trying to do something like this, my main piece of advice is don't use acrylic, which tends to splinter when you drill it. Uh, this is polycarbonate, and that's a lot easier to work with. And I wanted to use something that was transparent um, in the hope that we'd still be able to um, look at the, the, um, the wire wrapping underneath, which uh, again, I think looks pretty cool. So I wanted to be able to see that. So um, as is often the case, when the project has been sort of in a hardware mode for a while, as it has been, that eventually settles down and switch the attention switches over to software. And that's what it's been like for me for the last couple of days, because I've been switching all my software over to use the screen and the keyboard now that it's more of a standalone unit. Um, and that's what I've been doing, and I burned that onto this new ROM that I put in yesterday with uh, new versions of the software. So I thought maybe I would uh, do a quick software tour. In the past, when I wanted to show software, my computer was uh, running through the serial line to my laptop, and so I could just do a um, screen capture on my laptop. Now, of course, it's using its own screen. And so unfortunately, the best way I have to capture what's going on in the screen is just by pointing my camera at it, which is um, not great. And I'll have to find a better way of doing it. But um, in the meantime, in the meantime, I hope this is useful. So when the machine turns on, it boots into this uh, little disk manager. Um, and the disk manager has just a very small number of commands. It's really actually the fourth interpreter in disguise. Um, and so it's a sort of specialized command line interpreter, just um, easier to use than than a, than a full fourth. Um, and what it also what it basically lets you do is um, look at the files on um, on the on on the disk, and also to execute and load files. And so it can use executables that are on the disk to extend essentially the command set. So when I type something like dir, that's um, a built-in command inside the um, disk manager. But when I type cls to clear the screen, that's actually an external program that it loads from the from the disk. So there's a built-in command, for instance, uh, to um, to show a file, but it just scrolls by um, the paged version of that that you can use to actually, if you actually care about what's in the file and want to read it, um, that's an a, a external program, an app that is on the SD card and gets invoked by this command line interpreter. Um, and so, you know, the other things that I frequently end up using, uh, like the like the editor, um, they're also external programs that it just loads from the SD card when it needs them. Um, you can also at any point type fourth um, and it will just go into the full fourth interpreter and then you have, um, you know, the full version of the language available to you if you want. You can do programming in here um, and, and so forth. And so, so it's, it's basically all there for you and that's all built into the ROM. Most of the ROM space is taken up by my fourth implementation. It basically occupies this upper 16K. Fourth is quite large because I cho to, chose to code most of it directly in assembly language for speed. Um, and also because it incorporates all the SD card routines, a screen editor and, and more. I developed my um, SD routines uh, by within fourth, but um, made it much easier to debug. And it's since fourth is the main thing I run, that was the most useful part, uh, most useful way to do it. The lower part of the ROM space wasn't available on my original breadboard build, um, but became available with the more precise uh, dress decoding I have in the wire wrap version. So I hadn't been using it up to now. 
but in the new fourth I built yesterday, I'm using a little of that lower area for the video and the keyboard code, um, which just didn't fit in the 16K along with fourth. The fourth ROM also provides a jump table for applications to use so that they can um, take advantage of the same routines to access the SD card, the screen and the peripherals and so forth. So all the applications I've been running, like my editor or the pager and so forth, are using, they're basically calling into the ROM in order to be able to access those, uh, those peripherals. I think the next software task I want to take on is to finish the interactive assembler I started writing some time ago um, so that I can do assembly language programming directly on the computer. Um, the next hardware task to take on is to uh, explore and maybe incorporate a 65 SPI. So that's a CPLD, a, a programmable logic device, programmed to bridge between the 6502 bus and the SPI bus. So that would reduce the overhead of bit banging the protocols the way I am now um, and speed up access to things like the SD card. Um, I've also been working on documenting the schematic finally so that I can lay out a printed circuit board for a more compact version. Um, and then, as I mentioned in a previous video, I'd really like to uh, get that PCB made and embed it in a 3D printed case along with a screen as um, as a standalone unit. So as usual, I'll keep you updated with any progress.